Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're now at the point where we just want to finish off our form. Um, hopefully we can do it all in one video now. And so in the last video, if you remember correctly, what we did was we created our button and we said if a film had a rating, then it will have a button that says rate. So if I click on that, um, this mode will pops up, but you see there's nothing to, there's no way for me to vote right now. I know I can click on the X, it will close it. I can click on the cancel button, that will close it. Um, and if I click off it, it doesn't, but that's fine. Um, I want it to look a bit like this one. So when we click on um, on rate, we want a pop-up to happen. So a modal just like that, but we want something like this. So we want like, you know, stars or buttons or something to appear so that we can rate a film. So um, we're looking at how to create a form using Django. And so we're gonna create a simple form a bit like this one, but the way it's gonna work is Every one of those, um, every one of those buttons or stars, are essentially going to be a form of their own, uh, because each one of them will submit a different value. So let's let's have a look at how we're going to flesh that out. So if we go, let's go look at our code. Right. So this is our model that we created. If you remember, if we look at what we had last, let's uh, I'm saying listen, we had a look what we did last video. We had our div here for user rating, and we said that. If there was a rating, then the rating would show up. If there wasn't a rating, then we have this div for our modal, so our pop-up modal using um, Alpine JS. If the user was authenticated, then um, you know the button to open the modal will come up. Otherwise, it would be a link that sends the user to log in. Right. So now let's look at what happens when the modal does pop up. So this is our modal, and we here we have the modal title. But this is the area we want to concentrate on now. We want to create where our modal buttons are. Essentially then, looking at the example we had uh, here of Django Forms, what we want to do is create a form. Um, so, and that form, well, let's, yeah, like I said, it's gonna, it's gonna be in the form of a button um, and it's gonna submit some data with it. So if we go back to here, Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to create a form. So let's type in form. Okay. And the form action will just put dot for now, which basically I think just means uh, call the function that we use to load the page, I believe. So it, then it will, um, so yeah, it will, yeah. But obviously, then what we want is we want that to not be a get request, like when the page is first loaded. We want it to be a post request. So we say method equals post. Next, next, what we're going to do is inside that form, we're going to include um, our button. So let's say button, and let's just give it some basic styling. So we'll say class equals BTN, and it could be BTN, let's say primary. So it's blue, BTN primary. And I want this one to be, uh, let's say, for one star. So we're going to say one. If we take a look at what this looks like, we go back to our page. If we click on rate, oh, hold on. Let's refresh the page. Cool. So essentially, I want this, but um, obviously, this model is going to grow a bit. And we want 10 of these buttons. We could do stars, but I'll just keep the buttons for now. And so um, I'll make this simple and I'll just copy this out 10 times. But actually, before I do that, before I do that, let's think about what other data is going to go into this form. So we have our button. Um, in fact, no, this shouldn't be a button. This should be an input, right? So this is an input. Um, and I believe then what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of that one. Okay, because it is still an input, but we're going to save a type equals um, button. No, sorry, the type is submit. Which was which is a button, uh, and and our class here identifies what it's going to look like, um, and then we want to add some other data to this. So we're going to say that um, our input here, our button, should have an ID. So we're given ID, and let's call it um, let's just say rat one. So for rating one, um, our button should have a value. So button value will be one um, the name let's give it a name equals 
working. Um, this will make more sense in a bit. We'll come back to that. Um, and that's it. So that's our form kind of done apart from one other thing. All right. So obviously when we submit this, we also want, um, we also want to submit some other data along with this one rating of one along with the value. We also want to submit another input. Okay. And this is going to be type hidden. So this is not something we're going to see. It won't be another form element that be hidden. And we're going to say name equals uh, film. So this is to basically, so when we input data onto our, uh, let me explain what we're doing here. If we go back to here and we go to our models, let's go models, models. Right, so we have our ratings table. Okay, and what we're doing here is when we click on the submit button, we want to submit which film is going to be added to our ratings model at the same time. And we're also going to submit the user. So the user will do easy because it's going to, the user is always going to be whoever the authenticated user is. And then we also want to send the rating. So that's what the number is for. So from one to 10. Okay. But next, what we're doing is we're in a hidden field, we're going to submit the, the film as well. So let's go back to here. We can close that. And we can say in our hidden film, in our hidden field, uh, we have name equals film. So this is going to be for film. And we're going to give an ID of film as well. Then we're going to give it a value. So the value here is going to be taken directly from the page that we're on. So when this page was loaded, don't forget that this film has some context. So the context is going to be film dot ID. Now this is the value that's going to be pushed into our database. Um, and I think that should be fine. So if I click on save and now I hope that if we refresh our page, uh, oh no, no, no. Well, it will work. We, we, it will show up just like before, but it won't, um, it won't work just yet because we haven't, if I click on that, you'll see now I have one. If I click on, it will tell me that, oh yes, we haven't got any CSRF verification. So obviously um, forgetting that whenever we have a form we've also got to type in csrf so we go to django forms there we go so we've got to say that we're looking we want to add a csrf token let's just take that as it is okay and what this basically does is that when our form is submitted it submits a token along with the form to make sure that um, if it's the same, um, then there's been no tampering with the data between the browser and the backend server. So if we go back to here and let me just copy that in again, this isn't going to work because we haven't configured our backend yet. And if we go back to here and we go back and let's just refresh our page one more time and click one. Okay. Now it's done something. It submitted the data. But our backend doesn't do anything with that. So if we go here, you can see here we've got a post request, but it's a 403. All right. So basically we've submitted it. Hold on. Was, yeah. We submitted it, but it's not, not done anything with that. So let's do something with it this time. All right. So now um, now we want to go back to our, to our views. And where we have the um, page detail loading up um, for our film, we want to check something. So, oops, under here. We're going to say if the request dot method is equal to a post. So if it's a post request because someone's sending data for a form, then we want to say object um, equals rating. So we're basically going to add something to, to our rating model. Um, objects dot update or create and inside here we're just going to take some data from the from the form so we're going to say um, the film is basically going to, it's going to be get object or 404 so basically can you please search for from the film table so we're going to say from the film table can you search for the film with the primary key 
um, and that's going to be referring to from the request, so from the data that's been posted from the film request, sorry, from request.post, we want it to take um, film. So basically, let's go back to the form and I'll show you exactly what we're referring to here. We're saying from the request when it's posted, you can see here that we've got a, a name and an ID of film. So that's what it's referring to. And it's going to collect the value. So the value is going to be the ID of the film. Um, and so that's going to be passed through as our primary key. So that should collect the detail for the film. And then what we're going to do is we're going to collect the user, which is easily done. We're going to say get, again, get object. And we're going to say from the user table, from the user table, we want to uh, submit the request dot user dot id so um this then refers to the user that's logged in so the authenticated user and then lastly we want to add the rating so we're going to say rating again comes from a request dot post and this is the button now so where we refer to the button as ratings if we go back to here here in our button Okay, we gave this a name of rating, and it's just going to take the value, the value here being one. So let's try that out. Um, oh, one second. So if we say, if it's a post request, then do this. Okay, and so we're going to say rated. So the film has now been rated, and what we want to do is we want to return this data. So I'm going to say collect from the, from the rating, from the rating table. Now that that's been saved in the table we're going to say objects dot get and we want it to collect this data this film data that we just mentioned so film request dot post and the data it should be trying to collect is wherever the film is and it also needs to be from the same user so the user request dot user um i've made a mistake that's all there, sorry, I haven't got closing bracket. Um, oh, that's because my closing brackets there. Okay, so then we're going to collect that data and we're going to add that to our context. So our context, yeah, in fact, I'll do this. I'll say context rating. Oh my gosh, sorry. Contact rating is equal to rated. Um, instead, what we'll do is we'll run an else statement. So we'll run else and we're going to say if it's not a post request then it must be a get request so this is the stuff that we would have normally done we would have normally put together a get request in fact if i do that in fact let's give it all of this stuff here okay and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to remove rating from here so we want to say context again so context to rating is equal to rating so wherever that is here um, but our context now I feel like I should have context higher up on the page so let's just have let's put context here let's say context is equal to that and then I'll change this as well so this isn't ideal but basically what we're saying is no, I can't do that. I have to do it. I actually have to do this. So I'm going to say context. Um, so the context, we're going to include um, film is equal to film. And I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to say context. And this time we're passing through um, Jura for duration. Lastly, let's get rid of these two. We just want to pass through genres as well. So we're going to say, oops, context and genres is equal to genres. Right, so what we're doing here is we're passing um, passing this to the form, uh, to, to the template as normal. However, the only difference is, is if it's a post request, the rating comes after it's been rated, it's gonna collect it from the ratings table and then send it to the context. If it's not, um, 
If it's not a post request, it will do a get request, obviously. And if, it, if there's already a rating, then it will collect the rating in the same way. Um, and if, it, if there is no rating, then it will just pass it through as none. So that should work for us. Let's give that a go. Um, and then in, and in any case, it's going to return that, um, that template with the context included. So if I now save that, let's see what happens if we go back to our film and let's refresh. Um, now it's done that. If I click on the button and I click on rate, ooh, cannot access local variable film where it is not associated with a value. Right, so here what I've done is um, the context about the film, um, I have, I've basically only pulled up the context for the film if it's a get request and I shouldn't be doing that because if it's a post request, we still want to be sending that data. Um, so we're going to take that from there. In fact, really what I should do is I should take all of this stuff. Let's take that. Let's take genres as well. Really? This, so both of this stuff should be here. Yeah. Take that there. In fact, you know what? It make my life a bit easier. If this, con if this stuff is here, I can actually remove all of this stuff and um, do it the way I did it before. So here I can say, in fact, I can remove that from there. Let's put context here. So here, um, we could just say again that, um, and now that I've done that, I can get rid of actual line. Now I don't need to have film context and genres separately because that's now loaded right at the beginning um, and then all we're going to do is we're going to add the rating either if it's a post request or if it's um, a get request so hopefully if we save that now we shouldn't have the same problem again let's try that one more time let's go back let's refresh the page altogether now oh okay now what's happened is um, can you see that that rating was um, added even though the page didn't load back up after the post request the rating of one has been added so that's working but I want to show you something so let's go back to here let's go back to ratings and if we go to die hard which is the last one let's remove that from this user yes so we know that that works all right if we go back to here and refresh our page once again there's no rating so the button appears again now let's click on rate and if I add one What's happened is the actual whole page is reloaded and it's now, you know, presented us with this number one. Now you probably wouldn't, didn't notice that that happened in a split second, but the whole page did reload. It's easier if we just reload part of the page rather than the whole thing. So what we're going to do in the future is we're going to load just this section here and not the whole page is going to get reloaded with all that context again. So um, having said that, let's make some changes. First thing we'll do though is we'll add our other options here so this bit's done for now we're going to come back to that now um i need 10 of these i need 10 of these here um and i don't want to have like four rows for each one so i'm going to compress this quite a bit i'm going to do that and this is quite a lot isn't it this is going to be a very long line okay now where am i going to see some where i've got rating numbers so all of that should be fine here i'm going to go into double figures so eventually i'm going to do that and i'm going to go into double figures there as well so i'll do that that'll make more sense in just a moment now what i'm going to do is take that and i'm going to paste that cool um okay so that's my 10 buttons let's have a look how does that look on our form um, again, let's get rid of the rating. Let's refresh that. Get rid of our rating. Yes. And go back to here and refresh the page. Yes. Refresh the page. Okay, so now I can rate again. Oh, okay, so now I've got my 10 buttons and everything is, I want it in a row. Okay, so it's cool that I've got my 10 buttons here. Very nice. But I want it in a row. So let's change that again. 
So control and alt and down. So now that I've done that, I'm going to create a div. Let's say that. And we're going to say column. Um, column dash one. So I want, oops, dash one. Hit shift. All of that. And hopefully, if it was all lined up at the end, like I said, and it is, now I've got my closing div. Oh, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Okay, um, so that adds 10 columns. And if you remember above here, I've got a row. And let's refresh the page and load one more time. There we go, we've got our buttons li lined up in, in order now. So now if I hit, for example, nine, it's reloaded, actually it did, I could see it, it's very um, quick, but I did see the page reload. So we're gonna remove that. But again, so that's working, okay, cool.